Hey! So, this week was another one where I decided to let you guys choose what we we're gonna play. And the choices for this week were Driver 2, Muppet Race Mania, Automodelista, and Midnight Club 3. And as you can see, the winner was Automodelista. <sighs> I'm still not over the fact that Muppet Race Mania lost this one. It wasn't the first time I was asked to play this game. For a long time now, people have been requesting this one, saying it's one of the most unique racing games ever made. And Honestly, my curiosity peaked. I never knew this game existed before it was recommended to me, and thankfully the people in chat let me know why that was. You see, there is more than one version of this game. The original is coming out first in Japan in August 2002, then Europe in December of the same year. But after a poor reception, they decided to change the game for the North American release, and everyone hated it. The Japanese and European version, however, ended up getting a cult following with an impressively growing fan base in the last few years. So today we're gonna talk about Automobilista, uh, both versions. So, we are gonna play the Garage Life mode for this video, which is basically Automodelista's campaign mode. You start by creating your own garage, naming it and selecting a type. We'll talk more about garages later on the video. We then move on to select the starter car, and there are a lot of them in this game. It took me a minute to go through all of them, but again, I'll explain later on why that is in the video. Here we can name our car, give it a license plate, can tune our vehicle and start racing. And let's talk about the most obvious here, the graphics. The game has cell shaded graphics for cars and a tuny look for the environment, which actually age extremely well. People usually mention that cell shaded graphics never age, and I'm tempted to agree now. The game could have been made today and still look great for the standards. I really loved how detailed everything is, especially on the maps. You will notice some small things like the gauges turning a different color during the nighttime, the exhaust bumping around with the car or the brake calipers turning red when you use them too much. Of course, this isn't for everyone though, and I honestly wouldn't expect to see these in certain games like Need for Speed, even though it's what most people expected Unbound to be. But I would really like to see other racing games with unique art styles like this. One thing I didn't expect from this game is that there's customization for each car. Well, not a lot, but it's better than nothing. It is pretty lacking, containing only 2 or 3 bumpers for each car and only having a couple vinyls that you can pick from. Though, they always consist of a few lines too. And I'm not trying to defend this game like that meme where the guy is standing in front of someone sleeping, but I think even that was made to fit the simple and slick art style of the game. Every car looks like it's from this game if uh, that makes any sense. Getting to the game, you'll see that the game actually has real life places for races, which was really unexpected. Mount Roko, Akagi, the Suzuka circuit. It was really cool seeing all these different places in the game. And the gameplay was really not what I was expecting. Probably because of how this game looks, I was really expecting a very arcadey handling to the game. What I was not expecting was the game to have a more realistic one instead of following the cartoony style. I cannot be mad at it though, as I find myself really enjoying the gameplay after a few moments with it. At first, I was pretty confused and didn't think I would end up liking simply for not being what I expected. But after doing some turns, slowing down before turns, actually taking my time to learn how it worked, uh, it was really fun. Of course, I do have a little bit of a problem with the physics. The handbrake seems to have a very small gap in between what you will call drifting and completely losing control of your car, which can be very annoying. The car does a 180 every time, and it's not like you can counter steer it. After it decides to do a 180, it will do a 180. Colliding with opponents is also very janky in this game. The best way I can describe it is that it feels like a mobile game, like there's magnets forcing the cars away from each other whenever you get too close to them. But that's honestly not much of a problem, as most of you will be so far ahead of your opponents that you might not even have collisions in the game. Trust me, I was so mixed in this game, it's unreal. The game has little to no progression. You do have a few levels and each level has a few tracks that you gotta play, but most of the cars are already unlocked beside a few new manufacturers like Tommy Kyra, which honestly, I didn't know existed, but it seems to be not only a manufacturing, but also a tuning company in Japan. Pretty cool stuff. 
You can also unlock a few things to put your own garage and customize it, which I thought was cool, but is it really worth it over progression? Well, apparently for some people, yeah. It is what everyone wanted some time ago. A game that you can just pick a car, customize it your own way, customize garages, do engine swaps, pick a track and just drive. Almost like what Forza does these days, but before it was overdone. I can definitely understand that and maybe I just played this game at the wrong time. But I very much feel like it's missing a lot when it comes to having an objective. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just looking at it wrong. The music in this game. Let me remind you that this is a Capcom game, and most of its soundtrack was made by Tetsuya Shibata, also known as the guy who made the music for Devil May Cry 3, Marvel vs Capcom 2 and the new Resident Evil 4. The game also contains one single song by a band called Ing, which isn't bad but seems very off in comparison to the other songs in the game. I don't think I can play this one on YouTube, but you can check it out for yourself, it's called Springfield Ave. I should also mention that there's a narrator in this game, very Sega style, where he's constantly talking to you during races. Oh, and also, playing this game in certain levels like the Osaka Highway and just listen to the music with the controller vibrating along with the sound of the bumps in the road is such a vibe that cannot be just explained, you have to try it for yourself. I think the game really nails the chill atmosphere for most of the time, but sadly it really lacks a lot to be a great one. And here's the point where I simply have to mention how they completely butchered the game in the US release. Casey did a video explaining how and why this happened, which I highly recommend you check. I'll leave a link in the description, but basically because of the poor sales and reception, they decided to change things around for the US release and everyone in chat let me know how bad it was before I even touched the game. I gotta say, I was really curious to see. Usually whenever people talk this much crap about games, I end up having a kind of a pleasant experience with them. Probably for having expectations so low that I can't be disappointed by it. And getting into the US release, seeing more content than before actually got me like, oh, okay, this is cool. I mean, this is cool. Not only you have American cars now, there's also American tracks including rally ones. It's nice to see additions like that for a separate release, no complaints about that. I then decided to get into the game with the 350Z which I used a few minutes before during the other playthrough. And damn, this got impressively bad. <laughs> I don't know how this happened, but instead of fixing problems like the extremely easy AI or complete lack of progression, they decided to make cars feel like they're running on top of ice and completely disconnected from the roads. I'm not even joking when I say that this is impressively bad. I doubt that anyone there tried the game and thought it felt good to play. Not even the AI can drive around anymore. Uh, here, have you ever had a PS2 controller that had a broken analog stick? Like, they used to break inside and whenever you would push to the side it would stay that way and not come back to the middle? That's exactly how this game feels. If you push the analog somewhere for a second, your car will keep turning that way until it slowly decides to get straight again. It is really bad, and I'm really sorry if this was your first experience with the game. Also, if you were expecting me to go through this entire game again but like this, you will be disappointed. If you want to play this game, make sure you get the European version. It is by far the better one. I don't think there's a way to add the US content to the European release, which kind of sucks because it makes so the US content is strictly exclusive to the worst version of the game, the very much worse version of the game. I recommend that you try this game for yourself. 
It is definitely something unique that deserves the cult following it got. It's not a game for everyone, but if you're a car guy, give it a shot. It might become one of your new favorite games. And as always, a huge thank you for our new member, Yuki. Being a member helps me continue to do what I love, which is talk about video games, so thank you so much to every single one of you. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.